Hey everyone, I am Maddie P, the host of More Keys here on Unicorns Live. And today I am here to debut four artists for the second season of Cusick here on Unicorns Live. We're doing these shows on July 5th and 6th in Victoria, British Columbia, live at the Friends of Dorothy's Lounge. And we've been interviewing some fabulous artists, some hot artists, on the hottest day of the year. And I'm really excited today to talk to Matt Stern and Jessica Pickersgill, who will be performing at Ju on July 6th at the Friend of Dorothy's. Um, Jessica and Matt met serendipitously mid-pandemic, thanks to Matt's puppy, Max. Realizing they were neighbors and both musicians, they began to collaborate and never looked back. Harmonizing through waves of bittersweet longing, playful giddiness, gentle soothing, and raw connection. They weave a musical palette that invites everyone in. Catch them live this summer in Victoria and Vancouver and then beyond. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait to see them and I can't wait to talk to them. So let's bring them in. Matt and Jessica, hello. How Hi. are you? Hello. Hi, Matt. Good. It's so nice to like e-meet you guys through this uh, no kidding. Know. platform. <laughs> You're in Vancouver, right? I am, yeah. And so you guys are in Victoria and Unicorns Live is broadcasting from Kelowna. So we're really covering all the bases. Yeah, cross BC. You must be <laughs> nice and BC. sweaty. <laughs> yeah, you know, we got the Beyonce fan. We have another <laughs> fan. And lots of cool drinks and, you know, doing our best through the whole thing. But yeah, this is so cool. Um, and Matt, you um, are award winning Canadian singer songwriter with an impressive output. I mean, I was looking for everyone watching. If you go on Spotify, I'm looking at Matt's discography right now. He's got tons of full length albums a whole bunch of singles going all the way back to 2007. So when did you get well, you started know, I, at this? I've been kind of prolific on the songwriting and behind the scenes side. I was really, I was a really shy performer for a long time. So okay. I got started probably like 10, 15 years ago. I lose track of time, <laughs> but I, I was know, definitely it, tinkering in my goes. bedroom for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And your instrument is primarily the guitar then? Uh, yeah, guitar and piano, and I dabble in trombone, mandolin, and ukulele. Nice. Well, these albums I heard, um, I listened to all of them, actually, and they're really beautiful. They're beautifully produced, even going back to your first one, uh, Songs from the Wandering Spirit, to your newest Take It or Leave It. Um, and I was very impressed by the grand production of the whole thing. like. As a songwriter, you <laughs> obviously pay attention to your lyrics, but the bigger picture, too. I mean, on the newest one, there's horn sections. There's like this really rocking kind of feel to it and a lot of female backing vocals, too. So can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how you approach your production? Yeah, well, there's kind of been two sides. I mean, again, I often write alone in my bedroom, so there's an intimacy that comes naturally and, I, and I'm used to performing solo a lot. But what I dream about usually is having the songs fully fleshed out and collaborating with good friends. That's what makes it feel like more colorful and more full and real. So I've had the opportunity to work with great producers who kind of were able to unravel the possibilities in those songs. And like with the horns, um, I worked with a producer on the island, Joby Baker, and he just said, do you like horns? I was like, yes, I definitely would like horns. <laughs> and Yeah, let's take a <laughs> horn section, sure. Yeah, <laughs> let's see where it leads. You, you know. Oh, man. Amazing. And the result is beautiful. Uh, take it or leave it. The song is like so good. I just those horns sound Thank so you. beautiful. <laughs> um, and you have done some impressive gigs over the years and you have some impressive accolades as well. Like um, your resume is pretty cool. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of your favorite things you've done over the years as a musician? Um, yeah, well, I kind of, I keep getting the phrase in mind that I follow, it's like following a trail of breadcrumbs. Like I just kind of go to the next thing and see where it leads. And usually it's like meeting Jessica. It's like through these collaborations, it just kind of create new possibilities I didn't anticipate. Uh, so s some of the amazing things usually have involved kind of cross-cultural exchange. Like I ended up um, going on a trip to Japan, making friends with some musicians there. Serendipitously, I went to wow. their show and then talked to them after and then they invited me to do a homestay with them because they wanted to practice their English. And then I ended up on tour with them, co-writing with them. So it's just kind Amazing. of like, I don't, 
kind of like I try not to over plan in a way because things like that happen. Yeah, see where it leads and see where it takes you. Um, like I said, I heard a lot of in the production, a lot of female backing and kind of that duet sound on a lot of the songs. And I think it's really cool to hear how you two met. Like, um, <laughs> obviously, like it said in the bio, you met through the dog Max. So Jessica, yeah. you're Matt's neighbor. <laughs> yeah, well, so it was, it was it was so crazy that it happened. So it was in December, I think, right? Yeah. And we, yeah, so I, down. you know, we're all locked down. And of course, like as a musician, everything was just kiboshed, right? There was yeah. just nothing mm -hmm. for so long. So I had to, as a freelance musician, I had to pick up another job. So I worked at a local cafe here and uh, just what came through the door was this like tiny <laughs> eight week old fluffy the fluffiest potato of a dog you've <laughs> oh. ever seen in your life. And I so truly, sweet. I couldn't breathe. It was so cute. I, she like, doubled over. I truly <laughs> doubled over. I was like, I can't handle how cute this is. So I had to meet who the owners were. And so I stole yeah. the table from my other server. I was like, I need to serve this table. And so I ended up, we ended up talking and found out that he's a musician as well. And, and then found out not only were we musicians, but he lives three buildings down from where I live. Oh and we were God. like, this is just Amazing. beyond crazy. And so we started, we started talking, hanging out, seeing the dog and then started collaborating. And we're like, Oh, this is actually really fun. And this is feels great. And we, so, and then, and then he was so generous enough to ask me to do some Rope her in <laughs> to everything I'm doing. To everything. And now all of this is happening and it's just beyond, beyond fun. And I love how naturally it happened. It really was not forced in any way. It was just kind of. Well, that's the yeah. best collaboration, right? When you yeah. meet someone you click with and connect and, you know, Matt, like you said, you expand your sound and you, you just go with it. And That's I think it just, cool. it feels, it can feel very faded because, and also it's heightened by the, the pandemic factor, right? Because yeah. like Jess was saying, we were both like in lockdown, not able to play with other musicians. Like you really feel that. I'm sure you relate to that. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's we've been a, a lot, lots of virtual, so okay. much virtual. Yeah. Um, mm. So it was kind of been this unraveling to play together and have these opportunities. Yeah. That's super cool. Before uh, we did the interview, Jessica, you were telling me that you play the viola. Yes. Which is like, you know, for me as a piano player, um, I don't, I didn't know. I thought it was this big thing, but it's like, so it's don't sort worry, of like a violin. Don't worry, you are not the only one. You are not the only one. Uh, the viola is so basically like if the cello and the violin had a baby. So it's cool. like, it basically has, it's played like a violin, but it has the same uh, notes on the strings that the cello does, but it's an octave higher. So it's sort of this weird middle nice. ground. So it has a really warm... Like a depth to it. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have nice. the high E string that a violin does. So it has a little bit more darker tones. It's, it's a lot, yeah, like a lot warmer, but you can still get, you know, both sides. You can get the the yeah. the high the high sort of you know soaring stuff that people love but also the cheesy exactly yeah, yeah so That's it's just this cool. kind of really cool middle ground and I feel like the viola fits very well with vocals because it's got that same sort of middle range timbre as a lot of voices do so it's actually it's as a classically trained musician it's a blast you know playing and singing along with other styles of music as well so it's good. Yeah. Amazing. And I I can only imagine it's going to sound great with uh, these songs for the show coming up. And uh, yeah, let's talk about that. So this show is coming up July 6th at the Friends of Dorothy's Lounge. Are you two both new to Unicorns Live? Is it your first time on the platform? Yes, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, it's super cool to do a hybrid show like this right now where you're actually going to be able to feed off the audience and be there in front of a live crowd but also be able to show your friends <laughs> in other places around the world and um, have it up there to watch after the fact. So oh, it is I'm so excited. Excited. <laughs> That's a big yep. factor for me because I'm from Montreal, so I have a huge network of, of close people there who are going to be really excited about it too. Totally, and it's nice. That's one cool thing about this pandemic and doing the virtual music is being able to share it around the world. And... Um, yeah, I was going to ask, so because you two met during the pandemic, will this be your first performance together? Second. 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 Yes, okay, cool. it'll be our first larger, larger event. But yeah, this will be our second time ever. 
performing lives. Yeah, and the yeah. first one was just a couple days ago, yes, just on it Friday. Yes, just on Friday. So <laughs> cool. yeah, it's pretty well, crazy how quick. We yeah, <laughs> amazing. So with a uh, such a selection of songs, Matt, and spanning so many years, when you um, when you're planning for a show like this and making your set list, I know you're doing two sets on the sixth. Um, are you going to be pulling out some deep cuts? Or are you focusing most on the songs from Take It or Leave It? Um, or are you gearing the set more towards what's going to work with Jessica? I'm, I'm curious to know. That's a I appreciate that question because <laughs> I find it helpful to do a series of shows like we're about to do because usually yeah. I feel like I'm like going back to the drawing board each time. Just like you said, I'm like, yeah. okay, there's like a hundred different things to choose from. How do I frame yeah. this? So the way I'm doing it now, I have this French album that I just recorded. So cool. we're doing we're doing quite a few French songs, um, <laughs> and we're doing songs from Take It or Leave It and Magic, which is the one from just before. But yeah. then some deep cuts too, because there's some that just kind of resurface that I almost forget about, and they just mm -hmm. come back. And we're going to be playing at least one of Jess's original songs too. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Which is well, very exciting. <laughs> so, Jess, tell me a bit about your original music. Oh, um, well, I so I, kind of it's a very similar story to Matt. Like, I I didn't start songwriting until I got into college, and then uh, it was kind of like an escape for me because I was getting my master's degree in viola performance. So, which is wow. a very it's a very intense sort of perfectionist mindset and yeah, it's this you know it's the real deal oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was amazing and i'm i regret wow. nothing but it definitely and you know because it's it's a part of me and it's amazing but the it definitely sometimes the classical world can have a very overbearing like i said perfectionist attitude and so i kind of used songwriting as a bit of escape for that and whatever i was feeling i would you know and i i self-taught Started with ukulele as a lot of people do, because <laughs> yeah. that's what I could afford to put in my dorm room, <laughs> and totally. so I had and what would I, fit, probably. it fit and it was easy to travel with, yeah. um, and so that that's kind of how it started. And then uh, I kept moving different places, and my songwriting styles would change. And then and now I have like so many songs that I've written, and I started a little uh, a little group. Uh, just two years ago and started exploring those. And we're actually just at the point where we're gonna start trying to record our first things ever. So we're still very baby steps, but uh, it's it's been actually so nice working with Matt because he has all of this experience as we've been talking about and has such a wonderful way of looking at things and a natural instinct of collaborating. And so bringing songs, even like we're working on one that truly is very new. I just wrote it not a month ago. And it, it's hearing, you know, someone who knows what they're doing and, and who, yeah. well, <laughs> it really well. Uh, well and he, it seems <laughs> like it, it just clicks too, right? It like, really does. Clearly the two of you have fun together and that's so important. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's just been so, such a blast. And, and I always say like he pushes me out of my comfort zone and I think I sometimes push him out of his because I've had, I've been in choirs my entire life. So singing harmonies and stuff comes very naturally to me. And so it's just been so fun exchanging our different expertises together. And so it's, it's, it's created a really neat product, I think, for lack of a better word. Nice. Like it's just yeah, I think what we, when we played that first show the other day, we were both kind of like, what? what? Yeah. Like, how did this happen? It was like, it worked. <laughs> so <well. laughs> oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and I mean, that's so cool that you're going to be able to explore some of your new songs, Jessica, with Matt, just in the same way that Matt, you're going to be able to take some of those older songs you haven't played in a long time, and they're going to be fresh with a new spin on them. And man, that's the best part about doing a show like this. So mm -hmm. super cool. Um, I'm going to try to come to the show, by the way, in person. That's hey. awesome. I'm trying my best. So I'm hopefully going to be there. But either way, I'm going to be watching. Super excited about that. Um, so Matt, you, uh, you speak in your bio about promoting uh, diversity and body positivity through your platform. So um, can you talk about why that's important to you and why it's important to share that through your music? It's kind of the most important thing to me. It's the thing in all aspects of my life that I come back to and kind of my wish for everyone that we know how valuable we are, that we don't have to earn it. We don't need to seek validation. Like we already matter and deserve love and respect. 
and I don't think I sort of like hit people over the head with it in my music. I think it's just kind of inherent in it because it's inviting, you know, and it's clearly accessible for everyone. Um, and I think it it always comes up in like when I do when I dabble in dance, how I want kind of anybody with anybody to be able to participate, you know. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about it. We just took some promo photos yesterday, and it yeah. came up in conversation. Just like <laughs> it's got to be comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's really, really amazing, and I totally feel what you say about how it it's not in your face in your music. Your music is very approachable, and listening through your three albums and all the different singles, you've got a very smooth, gentle sound and but with some like really badass like musicianship behind it clearly like i'm hearing like crazy organs and electric pianos and the horns like we talked about and but then there's this message in there and it you know it drifts through all the songs and it, it's really something i loved the song full moon and oh. the video for it was very powerful <laughs> as well um, and for those of you watching who haven't seen the video, look up Full Moon um, by Matt Stern. Like, this is like a forest and it really seems to, you seem to be like calling out for something. Like, can you, can you explain your vision yeah. behind that video a little bit? Yeah, I love telling the story about that video yeah. because, again, it's like, uh, there's no, kind of no separation between the art and experience sometimes. Like, that video, mm -hmm. I was done with two director friends from Slovakia who are kind of, relatively recent arrivals to Canada and Victoria. And we decided to take a trip up island to like kind of the Duncan area. We had, cool. yeah, we had researched some spots that were kind of like abandoned bridges, kind of like, kind of with an eerie quality. We yeah. went with not a full narrative, but just kind of some artifacts that I had that had some, some symbolism and meaning for me. And then we kind of just let it unfold organically again. And on, there's one scene in that video where I'm standing at that, that bridge that I'm talking about. And I really had a genuine panic attack there. Oh because it was, I can't fully explain it, but it was like, we're in the middle of, felt like in the middle of nowhere. It was cold and damp, really abandoned. I felt really disoriented. Um, and so the kind of the look of whatever you read in my eyes is real in that wow. scene. It's real, wow. Yeah. But the song is very calming and it's very... Um... You know, it makes me feel like at the end, everything's going to be okay. And like, I really found it a beautiful song. Anyways, Are you guys going to play that one at the show? Yes. Yes. With a, a twist. Okay. Yes. <laughs> a mean, twist. It's, a, it's cool. a beautiful one to play. And we, he's, he's been open and, and putting some different spins on it. And it's, I love what we're doing with it. So it still very, very cool. much has the spirit of what it is, though. It's very important. So. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Jessica, I can't wait to hear and experience what you've added to these songs. And, <laughs> and quite frankly, watch the dynamic of you two on stage. Like, you're fun to talk to, both of you. So I think it's Same. I'm sure right it's going to be an exciting show. Yeah, and I personally, I've worked with different uh, duos in the past, and it changes the show a little bit. It changes the energy. Like, you know, it can be a lot of fun to have someone like that to bounce off of. And I think the show with you two is going to be pretty cool. So Matt, you said uh, you spoke about this French album. I know you're from Montreal, so you speak French and write both in French and English. And you've had some like great successes with your uh, French music as well. But can you tell us a little bit about the new one coming up or is it uh, hush hush at this point? I can I can tell divulge a little bit. So okay. the the fun kind of like paradox is that I'm an Anglophone from Montreal and saying mostly okay. in English. I'm from like kind of like an English community in Montreal. I always gotcha. loved French. I went to French immersion. Have a lot of mm -hmm. Francophone friends, but it's only since my move here that it's taken such a bigger place in my life because I was I connected with the Francophone community because I wanted to kind of keep it going, um, yeah. and that kind of it's kind of in demand in a special way here because it's such a minority situation here to speak French. So that's sort of like my collaboration with Jess, that's sort of taken on a life of its own. I ended up yeah. writing a whole bunch of new songs in French um, and then I wanted to have something concrete, concrete to share with people. So that led to this album. Um, and I think I also gave myself projects during the pandemic to kind of keep the creative juices flowing. And this, this was one of them, you know? Cool. 
Oh man, well that's exciting. I'm exciting, excited to hear it and I know you'll be doing some of those tunes on the 6th and we'll look forward to watching. Um, and you two are planning to do more shows together in the future, yes? Yeah. Like this is an of, ongoing thing. This summer, it's kind of insane how immediately it was just like poof, 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 like different, <laughs> gigs, different gigs, 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 gigs popping up everywhere. Yeah. It's like the floodgates have opened and we're taking full advantage. Just earlier you said today, you're coming? I posted them all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to go look because I am definitely going to be there when you're here in Vancouver. So. What Can't were you going to say? Is that what you're going to ask about? Yeah, when Vancouver? you're coming to Vancouver. Well, that's kind of the exciting culmination yeah. of it all. We're playing at the Francophone Festival, Summer Festival in Vancouver on August nice. 23rd. Yeah. It's kind of like a wonderful way to conclude this series. <laughs> It'll be perfect. It's been a wonderful challenge because she doesn't I speak don't French. French. <laughs> <laughs> you just smile and nod, smile and nod. I, well, again, I, she's the real deal in classical training. She's totally able to fake it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you got yeah. the chops. Oh man. You'll be fine. Well, <laughs> man, it's been such a pleasure talking to you too. And Thank for you. those of you who are watching, make sure you check out Matt Stern on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to your music. Some beautiful songs. My personal favorite is the Take It or Leave It with the crazy horns. <laughs> and um and then yeah, on July 6th, live from Friends of Dorothy Lounge in Victoria. You can see it in person if you're there, or you can watch it for free on Unicorns Live and uh, check out the platform. It's been great talking to you guys. You One last you. question. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear your pandemic banger. What got you through the year from each oh of you? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you first. Oh. I mean, <laughs> you heard me talk about this, but it's Sade's greatest oh, hits. Great. I have her greatest nice. hits in my car. I just play to death, I, and when I'm ever feeling anxious, feeling overwhelmed, it just like she, her approach is so deep and real, and it just nice. like it soothes me very effectively <laughs> at every answer. turn. Oh, yeah. God, your answer choice. is so much better than mine. And there are no wrong answers. <laughs> hey, you can pick Cardi B. You can do it. Yeah, Cardi B like, works. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Megan the Stallion. Oh, it was sure. um, it was simply red. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Was, it. I just I play awesome. Anyways, I just love it, and that that made me so happy. <laughs> hey, mine was like Celine Dion. So love what it. song? What <laughs> song? What's... Well, it uh, kind of like you, just sort of in general. I yeah, just like putting on Celine when things got rough. Oh, beautiful. Just, you know, as something a, about familiarity. Who grew up in Montreal. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, you guys, I think we'll leave it there. We'll look forward to uh, seeing your show July 6th. I hope Can't you can wait. make it. Totally, yeah. I oh, hope yeah. to see you. I'm going to try my best. You guys are awesome. It was great to talk to you. You, you too. too. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>